Hi, everybody. Mike Farah here. Uh, today, I'd like to talk to you about a very interesting case that's come up again recently in the news. It's called the Calvine UFO photograph, and it's an old photograph from about 1990. I think, in fact, August of 1990, which is a really interesting case that's been covered by a lot of people over the years. Now, I consider myself the world's foremost expert on, let's say, the moon landing hoax. I'm certainly one of the I'm certainly the top expert on that. I consider myself the world's top expert, maybe next to Richard C. Hoagland on the face on Mars and artificial structures on Mars, that kind of thing. But the Calvine UFO photo is not something I'm an expert on. It's a, it's a case I've known about, I've, I've heard about, I'm aware of, I've seen reconstructions of the picture, but I've never actually done a deep dive analysis on it. And uh, apparently it has been connected to my old buddy Nick Pope from Ancient Aliens, a uh, former comrade at Ancient Aliens. And I just thought, well, you know, this is out. Nick's talking about it. Let's take a look at it and see what the case is for it and what the case is against it and see if we can figure out what's going on here. So uh, basically, the Calvine UFO video is is really our video. I keep saying videos, photo. Photo is is a really interesting case. Um, this is a reconstruction of what the photo supposedly so showed. And the question is, is it fact or is it fiction? So uh, Nick, a couple days ago, came back and said the debate over the Calvine UFO photo has become a skeptic versus believer dogfight with some basic errors and mistaken assumptions on both sides. I can't reply to all the questions I'm getting on this, but this old article, which I had to dig up via the Wayback Machine, gives an insight into what we thought about this at the Ministry of Defense and may help straighten out some of the basic facts. Look at how young Nick looks there. Okay, so I went to that link, and I looked up what Nick had written about it ooh, quite a while ago. I don't, uh, I don't remember the exact date, and it's not shown on here. But here's basically what it talks about. Um, the saga began on 4 August 1990 when two members of the public out walking in the vicinity of Calvine near Pitlochry in Scotland uh, sighted a massive diamond-shaped metallic UFO. The UFO was virtually stationary and hovered silently for what the witnesses believed was several minutes before accelerating away vertically at massive speed. During the sighting, a military aircraft believed to be a Harrier, it is, was seen, but it wasn't clear if it was escorting the craft, attempting to intercept it, or whether the pilot was even aware of it at all, ever aware of it at all. It should be even aware of it Matt, uh, there, um, Nick. A number of color photographs were taken. Color photographs, spelled C-O-L-O-U-R, the way the Brits do and passed to the Scottish Daily Record, who in turn contacted the MOD, probably because they were seeking a comment for the story. It's not clear what happened next because I didn't join the MOD's UFO project until 1991, and this investigation was handled by my predecessor. It seems that somehow MOD managed to persuade the reporter to part with not just the photos, but the negatives. The photos were then sent to the Defense Intelligence Staff, DIS, who then sent them on to uh, imagery analysis at the Joint Air Reconnaissance Intelligence Center, yet at the time, MOD had hadn't even publicly acknowledged that there was any intelligence interest in UFOs at all. The whole situation was positively Orwellian. On the one hand, our line to Parliament, the media, and the public was that UFOs were of no defense significance. We implied and sometimes stated that we didn't investigate UFOs, but merely examine sightings to see if anything reported was of any defense interest, as if the two were somehow different. I sometimes felt like Winston Smith working for the Ministry of Truth, which was literally, this was literally doublethink. Okay, then later on, he talks about how he asked my DIS opposite, again, that's the Defense Intelligence Staff opposite number, about the image. Uh, photograph. It's not an image, uh, Nick. It's a photograph. I was told that the official assessment was that the photos were real and the craft had a diameter of around 25 meters, which in real terms is 80 feet. That's a real number. Uh, at one particularly surreal briefing on the UFO phenomenon, my DIS opposite member indicated the photo was point and pointed his finger to the right. It's not American, he said, before pointing to the left and saying it's not the Russians. There was a pause before he concluded that not only leaves, his voice trailed off and he didn't complete the sentence, but his finger was pointing directly upwards. Despite the various media interviews I did on this story and associated public appeals, the witnesses have never come forward. Neither has anyone at the Scottish Daily Record or any other Scottish new newspaper come forward to say that they worked on this story back in 1990. Understandably, this has generated a few conspiracy theories. I wonder if the truth is a little more mundane. 
In their desperation to acquire the photos slash negatives and maybe kill the story, maybe DIS staff somehow tricked the journalist into handing over all the material and never gave it back. If the journalist hadn't briefed the editor, he may have stayed silent out of embarrassment. Similarly, maybe the witnesses were told that they would be better. It would be better if they didn't discuss what they'd seen and took this as a threat. Speaking of conspiracy theories, that's Nix. Okay, so that's the basic background of this. There were color photographs taken of this thing. So there were also apparently reports. Now, this is something I got off Twitter. I cannot vouch for the veracity of this, but these are supposedly the handwritten reports, Saturday, 4th, August, 1990, location Calvine, Scotland, 20 miles north of Plutarchy off the A9 time, 9 p.m. approximately. Looks a little a little bit bright for that, but it is Scotland, so it's possible. Uh, description, huge diamond shape UFO hovering for about 10 minutes before ascending vertically upwards at high speed. Uh, during sighting, RAF aircraft believed to be a Harrier made a number of low-level passes for uh, five to six minutes before disappearing off. Witnesses named, witness, uh, blah, 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 additional information. A number of color photographs were taken by eyewitnesses and pictures passed to RAF, Pitwiry, and Scottish Daily Record. Original negatives also passed to the Daily Record. Here's a, here's a hint. If you take good photos of a UFO, folks, never give anybody the negatives, never give anybody anything but a, a print. Okay, so um, after that, uh, there's some more information, talks about the main cloud base was 25,000 feet, dropping down to 15,000 feet. Notice they use feet and not meters in their uh, altitude analyses. Um, light showers, winds were not much. Photographic defect details, confirmation of date and time, what sort of camera, what type of lens. These are apparently things that need to be found out uh, about. And then there's some sort of document here, which I don't know is genuine, somewhat redacted, talks about photographs of an unidentified flying object, Scottish Daily Record. Uh, the United States of SAF may wish to be aware that the Scottish Daily Record may run a story regarding an alleged sighting of a UFO near Pitt Lockery. In early August, such stories are not normally drawn to the attention of ministers and the MOD press office invariably responds to questions along well-established lines. It's in the, I'm doing what David Wilcock does, which is I'm reading this. Uh, the MOD has been provided with six photographic negatives of an alleged UFO by the Scottish Daily Record and has asked for comments almost certainly for inclusion in a forthcoming story. So it did go to the MOD and they were examined. Photographs which were received on 10, 10 September are alleged to have been taken near the A9 road near Clavine. Uh, I think it's Calavine. Clavine? So I might have been saying it wrong. North of Pitt Lockery on the evening of 4 August, they show a large stationary diamond-shaped object past which it appears a small jet aircraft is flying. The negatives have been considered by the relevant staffs who have established that the jet aircraft is a Harrier. It is. And also identified a barely visible second aircraft, again, probably a Harrier, but have reached no definite conclusion regarding the large object. It has also been confirmed that there is no record of Harriers operating in the area at the time at which the photographs are alleged to have been taken. The negatives have now been returned to the Scottish Daily Record. So this report, whatever it is, if it's authentic, we'll have to ask Nick about that, says that everything was returned to the Scottish Daily Record or at least the negatives were. In consultation with RAF, it has been agreed that the attached lines to take should be used in responding to the Roswell, to the Scottish Daily Record, Roswell Daily Record. Uh, these are consistent with the position adopted in replies to the many public, public and occasional parliamentary inquiries on the subject of UFOs. So the photographs disappeared. The negatives apparently disappeared, although that document says they were returned to the Scottish Daily Record. But later on, people went and did artist rendering of what supposedly this looked like. Now, apparently in the MOD office, there was a poster, kind of like Mulder's I Want to Believe poster, um, of uh of a of a of this thing on in the background and people could see it um and nick put out a tweet a couple uh days ago that said while i was given while i've given an insider mod perspective on the calavine ufo incident i haven't commented on the provenance of the photo provided by former raf press officer craig Lindsay, and have neither confirmed nor denied that it is an authentic copy the image below is a rec is a recreation so this of course is a recreation in color here's a close up of what people think the object looked like based on those that have actually seen the photographs well this guy craig Lindsay, with permission of the sheffield hallium university 
Maybe they have the prints. Maybe they got them. Put out apparently a day or two ago what he alleges is one of the so-called Calavine UFO photographs. And all we got here is this diamond-shaped object in the sky, which is considerably clearer than the obviously moving Harrier jet in the background. And yeah, that is a Harrier jet. Uh, you can see some trees overhead, some fencing in front, and a cloud cover, overcast cloud cover like the handwritten reports indicated. So this is kind of interesting. If you zoom up on it, again, you can see the uh, Calavine UFO, which is kind of a wedge shape or diamond shaped object and the Harrier very, very close. It is pretty interesting stuff. So Nick kind of went all in on this. He responded to somebody by email. He said, thank you for your email. While I see the similarity, the images and negatives were examined at the time by intelligence community imagery analysis experts who were able to use a variety of techniques to determine that the photos were not faked in any way and that they did indeed show a large unidentified craft and not a small object close to the camera. Uh, obviously, somebody's saying it could be a small object hanging from the tree close to the camera. I hope this is helpful. You're free to use and publish the above quotation. Best wishes, Nick Pope. So what Nick is saying is the real photographs were determined by the intelligence community imagery experts at the time in 1990, 22 years ago, um, to be a large unidentified craft far away from the camera. Now, that does not mean that this photograph is one of those that was examined. It could not even be a photograph. It could be It could be a fraud. Now, it's interesting because this is very similar to other photographs uh, in Puerto Rico. I've got England there. It's actually Scotland. Oh, I blew that one. Sorry. This is a Puerto Rican photograph that's determined to be fake. It's basically the same concept. You've got, um, you know, you've got hills and trees in the foreground, fencing in the foreground, a large object, and a jet nearby, in this case, an F-14 Tomcat instead of a Harrier. So there is ample reason to think, well, this could be a fake as well because the Puerto Rican turned out to be fake. And we've had other images over the years that it's really hard to determine whether or not um, whether or not they are in fact real images. Um, this is the famous McMinnville, Oregon invaders UFO, as I like to call it. Not the best print of it, but it, I didn't have time to really find a great one. And then there's another photograph, I think from Brazil, of a an object and and these are the whether the authenticity of these images remains in dispute now other people have come in and said well you know um this could be something else it's not what we think it is but it has been determined apparently where the photograph was taken this is alejandro rojas let's be generous and say he's not the sharpest tool in the shed um telling people well this is where the photo was taken and yeah other people have gone and looked they've actually looked on google earth and things like that and found apparently the exact place where the image is taken there are some problems with this though because if that photograph is a real photograph it's genuinely one of the calavine ufo photos then something's gone wrong because there are as you can see a bunch of visible hills in the background there's another hill in the foreground that's not obviously this Hill right here is in the foreground and does not appear to be the same um, as the photograph. So the guy superimposed the fake, I think it's the fake, the uh, artist rendering, Calavine UFO and the Harrier as to what that photograph should look like. So if this photo is in fact genuine, it should look more like this with hills and trees and fields in the background. And there isn't any of that in this photo. In fact, it's completely blank in the background. So again, uh, let's take a look at these two side by side. Now, these sure look like the same place. You've got this support strut here, some sort of a wire. You've got the bush or the block over here on the left. You've got uh, some vertical fence posts. That one and that one appear to be the same, and that one and that one appear to be the same. So it does look like the same location. If that's the case, where's the hill where's the fields and the trees and the mountains in the background so i think the authenticity of this photo as to whether it's one of the calavine ufo photos or not is seriously in question let's go back a couple um and again take a look at these two examples i i think it's probably correct that that is the location but it just doesn't look like this. And I think that is a big problem. Now, as far as I can tell, 
Nick is in agreement that this is nearly identical to, to the poster on his wall and to everything he knows about this photograph, but I believe he's made it clear he's never seen the original photographs. Another thing I think is a problem here too. This is black and white. These were color photographs with color negatives. You could easily, the University of Sheffield Helium, 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 Sheffield Helium, could easily, easily have produced if they had the negatives or if the Scots, the Scottish Daily Record had, Scotland Daily Record, had, anyway, had them, they could produce color negatives. This is not color. This is black and white or grayscale. It does not appear to be color. Now, I will say this. There was uh, another analysis done um, by some photographic experts who apparently have seen this photograph, and I found it on, on Twitter. I don't have it here that claim that, yeah, it was printed on, this is printed on stock paper from the 1990s, the Kodak stock paper. So could very well be something. But again, I think we have a problem here with these particular photographs. So um, this is not, th there's a lot of possible explanations here. Here's a UFO flying over a bunch of people who don't even seem to be noticing it, except it's not a UFO. It's an upside down picture of a SUV that somebody, presumably, I'm not going to say a woman, drove into a lake. And this is simply a reflection, a mirage, which easily could also explain the Sheffield UFO. What if this is simply a picture of a lake or stream nice and clear, nice and placid, reflecting a Harrier jet flying overhead and a rock or the corner of a truck or a vehicle or a box or something that fell into the lake. I'm not saying that's what's going on, but I think it's a distinct possibility and people are not out of line for suggesting it may be true. So what are we to make of all this? Um, I don't know. I have some serious questions. I have some questions about whether this is the photograph that people at the MOD saw. Uh, there are discrepancies in the story as to whether or not the negatives were returned to the Scottish Daily Record or not. And there's other problems. For instance, back at this time period, back in 1990, guess what? Aviation Week and Space Technology was talking about new aircraft designs being developed by guess who the United States, including in the article, and guess what? Does this look exactly like it? Kind of an elongated diamond-shaped unmanned vehicle measuring about 110 feet long and 60 feet wide. Well, that would be a little bit longer than the 80 feet that uh, the MOD analyzed this thing to be, but that could that's their guessing. They're not experts in this. Uh, Call it a flattened football shape, but four and a half endpoints as well as the leading edges are round rather than sharp. Although diamond shaped, the aircraft's basic contours might be described as similar to those of a smooth skipping stone. The vehicle has a heavy appearance likened to the blocky sturdiness of a caterpillar tractor or even the space shuttle. Now, what is this a representation of? It is a representation of an experimental aircraft commonly called in the late 80s and early 1990s, the Aurora program. Aurora, named after my wonderful, beautiful pet kitty who I just lost. So could this be simply a an Aurora spacecraft being tested, messing with the Brits? It certainly could be, but I think the coincidence here is a little too much to actually um, actually think is is no big deal. So... I really do um, I really do think that the questions remain open. First of all, is this authentically, this new photo that's been released from Shellingham University or whatever by David Lindsay, is that one legitimately one of the original photographs of the Calvine UFO? Calvine, not Calvine, I keep calling it Calvine. Calvine UFO. If it is, why isn't it in color? If it is, why does it bear such a strange resemblance to the Aurora spacecraft or aircraft, which was being developed by the U.S. government at the time, according to Aviation Week and Space Technology and many other sources at that time? If it is authentic, what's wrong with the background? 
where are the hills and trees and fields behind it? Because we appear to have found the place where the photograph was originally taken. With all these problems and all these discrepancies, I honestly can't come to a conclusion about it. But what I can say is that I think it's very unlikely that this is an authentic photograph. I think it's very likely that this is a fabrication of some kind. Kind. That doesn't mean it's not a real photograph on real paper. That doesn't mean it wasn't done in the old fashioned way of hanging a model from a tree. There are branches up there, but we appear to have found the location. It doesn't look right. It's black and white instead of color. We don't know about the source and I'll, and we, we can't really confirm any other details about it. So at the moment, although I haven't reached a final conclusion, I have to be honest, I'm leaning towards this being an inauthentic photograph of the Calvine UFO incident. It doesn't appear to be one of the originals. And since we can't find any of the witnesses, how are we going to do anything about it? How are we going to go any further? I don't know. I look forward to discussing this with anybody who wants to discuss it, including Nick. And uh, don't forget, please, to visit our wonderful sponsors, the CBD Gurus, the CBDGurus.com. They are awesome people. And do not forget that you can always send me some love if you appreciate these videos at paypal.me slash Mike Barra or Venmo at Mike Dash Barra. Thank you guys very much for listening. And I look forward to seeing you all and talking to you all later this week. Thanks a lot. Have a great week. Bye-bye.